Welcome to the Cumulus Network's video series on OpenStack. In this video, we're gonna talk about using routing on the host, or row, with OpenStack to build truly web scale OpenStack clouds. So I have a traditional spine and leaf network, pre-deployed, running eBGP across it to connect my spines and leaves together. This is a pure layer three spine and leaf network. I also have my servers attached to leaves in which VMs will be deployed by OpenStack Nova. With routing on the host, or row, what I will do is I'll take the Cumulus BGP application called FRR that runs on each switch in my environment, and I can run that as an application on my top of rack server. This allows my server to extend that eBGP fabric down from not only the spine and leaf, but all the way down to the server level. At this point, that means that there are no VLANs or VXLANs anywhere in this environment. But it's still a requirement to be able to allow these two virtual machines to be able to speak at layer two through some sort of tunneling mechanism. So to achieve that, OpenStack Neutron, the networking component of OpenStack, will provision VXLAN tunnels via the modular layer two plugin, and we'll actually build VXLAN tunnels that go from server to server. And I will use BGP to figure out how do I get from one server to the other server through an entirely layer three network. So I have OpenStack ML2 only provisioning VXLANs from server to server, never operating on my spine and leaf network at that point. This builds a truly web scale environment and network. The other key component here, when talking about Cumulus Networks' eBGP and routing on the host, is something called BGP unnumbered. Using BGP unnumbered, we get an extremely simple configuration that I can use on spines, leaves, and my compute nodes. And all I have to do is define my BGP autonomous system number, the interface in which a neighbor lives, and if it's an internal or external neighbor. No other configurations required at all. This will build a BGP peer that is an external BGP peer on the port Ethernet 1. I do not need an IP address on this interface. I don't need to define any parameters at all. And I'll dynamically discover the neighbor, exchange autonomous system information, exchange IPv4 and IPv6 routes, and be able to quickly and simply build my entire infrastructure. And then each of these VXLAN tunnels is actually sourced and terminated on a loopback interface, or the LO interface of each server that's advertised via BGP into the fabric. The most important thing to keep in mind in this solution is the fact that the servers are actually the component in the network or of the infrastructure doing the VXLAN encapsulation and decapsulation, which oftentimes will require special NICs or smart NICs to be able to offload that capability to the network adapter instead of doing it on the CPU itself. Depending on your environment and your workloads, that can be a network uh, or a CPU performance hit of anywhere between five to 20%. And so although this is a truly web scale architecture, it does have that caveat that smart NICs are almost always required in order to do this successfully. If smart NICs are not an option or we're building a smaller environment, an alternative would be using BGP EVPN across this environment, 
which is discussed in another video. So look at the other videos in this series to understand more about building OpenStack networks with eVPN, about building spy and leaf networks, or the differences between VLANs and VXLANs, and how I can use them both for tenant isolation.